Hey guys, welcome back to my creepy little corner. If you are familiar with these surroundings and know who I am, that is pretty groovy. If not, my name is Madeleine Klein and I talk about all things Canadian true crime, missing persons, mystery, and history. Recently, someone reached out to me regarding Provost Alberta, the murders, and the dark racist history, which I had no idea about. But in my search, I learned about 23-year-old Tim Salzman, who was beaten, killed, and dismembered over a $1,500 drug debt on August 2nd, 2004. Here is that story. So Tim Salzman was born May 7th, 1981 in, I believe, St. Albert, Alberta. But during this time, he was living in a house in Hayter, Alberta, which is like an eight minute drive from Provost. Tim was living with two other men, William Taylor and Mark Horning. William Taylor is alleged to have gang ties, specifically to the white boy posse. <laughs> I'm sorry, I feel so ridiculous saying it. The white boy posse. I shouldn't laugh, it's a real thing. Anyway, the white boy posse is a neo-Nazi white supremacy group actually founded in Edmonton, Alberta in 2003. The founder leader of the white boy posse had close ties to the Hells Angels, which is why William Taylor was selling drugs on their behalf. Tim allegedly used some of the drugs he was supposed to sell, and that's where this $1,500 drug debt came from. On the evening of August 2nd, 2004, Tim, William, and Mark were all drinking at a local bar. It was at this bar where William and Mark started brutally beating Tim over this drug debt. Tim was nearly unconscious when he was thrown into a truck and taken back to their house in Hayter, where they had to carry him into the house and down to the basement. He was already in such bad shape. They brought Tim to the basement of the house where William continued to beat and torture him. William used a power saw to remove Tim's hands and cut his legs while he was still alive. There was a key witness named Lee Morgan who was present in the basement and testified to seeing Tim laying in the fetal position in a massive pool of blood and moaning while William Taylor dismembered him. William would eventually remove Tim's head as well and dump the majority of his body in a swamp on the Saskatchewan border. He disposed of Tim's head and hands elsewhere and they have never been recovered. There isn't a massive amount of information available on this case. So I'm not sure how long Tim was missing before it was reported or how they figured out that foul play had occurred. I don't know what order in which these events happened. I imagine there was a ton of forensic evidence in the house, enough to establish a murder had taken place because eventually William Taylor and Mark Horning are arrested and charged for the murder of Timothy Salzman. On February 5th, 2007, William Edgar Taylor was found guilty of second degree murder and sentenced to 18 years without parole. He was offered a lighter sentence in exchange for where he put Timothy's body, but he refused. Also, the only reason he didn't get first degree murder is because there was a reasonable doubt Tim had been tied up. That was the deciding factor. Mark Horning was found guilty of manslaughter on May 21st, 2008, and was sentenced to 11 years in prison. However, they credited his time served and doubled it. So he had spent three and a half years in jail. For some reason, they doubled that credit to make it seven years, leaving only four more years to serve. Jail math is so weird. Mark maintained he left the basement while Tim was still alive and didn't participate in any of the beatings that occurred at the house. It's also said that he was given a lighter sentence because he ended up indirectly providing investigators with enough information to find partial remains of Tim. Tim's obituary reads that his date of death is May 14th, 2008. So I'm assuming that is the day they recovered his partial remains. But as I mentioned before, they have never recovered Tim's head or hands. Mark Horning would end up receiving day parole in early 2010 and receiving full parole on October 15th, 2010. A cool two years served after being sentenced. 2010 was 13 years ago. Who knows where he is or what he's doing now? Time flies and William Taylor has already served 16 of his 18 year sentence. He's up for parole right quick here. Who knows with our lackluster and abysmal justice system, they might actually grant it. 
All we can do is wait and see, I guess. I really hope this psychopathic monster never roams free again. So that is pretty much it on the Tim Salzman case. It's so sad and so unnecessary. Killed over a $1,500 drug debt. Unimaginable. I'm gonna look more into the racist history of Alberta and probably talk about that in an upcoming video. I'm not sure why I continue to allow myself to be so surprised that my neighboring province is so racist, but I, I keep letting myself be surprised and I shouldn't. Maybe I've just been like living with my head buried in the sand forever, but I can't believe that there are Nazis in the country and like in my neighboring province and probably my province. Anyway, I think that's it for me for today. As always, thank you guys so much for being here. I don't think I have any links today, just my link tree. So you can find all my content and goodies there. Like, comment, subscribe, really do whatever you want as long as it's not murder or joining a cult. Okay, I'm gonna wrap this up. I will catch you guys next week. Love you, bye.